We've got about 500 kilos of honey this year. Which would equate to about 2,000 jars. That's about 10 grand's worth of honey? Yeah, we haven't quite decided on the prices yet. Oh yeah, it could be 20 grand, could be 20 grand. <laughs> I'm Barnes. I'm Webb. He's Webb. We're urban beekeepers. We rent hives and we sell honey. We're pretty much the biggest London honey producers. God. It's trying to sting the camera. The hives that we have, we label the jars up by the postcode that they're in. So that's something that we're doing differently to other London honey producers. So it's ultra local. Some people believe that it's good for allergies like hay fever because you're getting you know, pollens um, which are in your neighbourhood. If it's just London honey, you know, it could be anywhere within the M25, but this you know, is going to be just around the corner from where you live. We get a phone call email saying we'd like some hives. So we go around and do a free inspection, check the space, make sure it's suitable for bees, make sure we can gain access and do our job. That's going to be heavy carrying those hives up there. Oh, God. You can, you can carry them. Thanks. If they're keen for two hives in every place. This is definitely one of our most ambitious hive installations. It's on the fourth floor of that building around the back there. And it's got like a little rickety step ladder to get up. This is the really heavy one, isn't it? These hives in the back. One of them probably weighs about 40 kilos. And if that falls, then it's going to be Armageddon. They're noisy. They get quite angry when you're transporting them around because they're bouncing around quite a lot. So once we've got them up there, we'll let them settle a bit and then open them up and then leg it. Okay. I've got longer arms than you. <laughs> I can barely fit in. Which way now? That way. Whatever you do, don't fall over. <laughs> A bit awkward, isn't it, on that bendy stairs? Yeah. Oh, How are you boys feeling? Tired. <laughs> Sweaty. It's really heavy. Right? They're not happy, are they? Ooh, watch the roof. This is interesting. <laughs> okay, take a rain. This is fucking crazy. Ready? Wow. That was hard work, yeah, that was um, that was sweaty. Uh, the highs weighed a ton. Wasn't sure whether we'd actually get them up on this on this roof, but we made it. Excuse me, bees. How are they looking? Pouring out. They're here. The bees are flying around. They're happy. Mission completed. Done. You have bees. I love honey. I can live on honey 24 hours a day. So I'm looking forward to having my own honey for a change, one. Number two, we can start selling it to our customers. So whilst we will put it on the menu, but our customers can have the pleasure of buying something that's a City of London product. London is the greenest city in the world. Down below, we've got courgettes growing, carrot, cucumbers growing, beetroot growing. Plus, we have put two green roofs down below, so the bees can actually feed off our own uh, pastures, so to speak, you know. I wanted them in my garden at the bottom. My wife is too scared. She thought, you know, the bees are going to be buzzing and biting people. So we said, OK, we'll bring them up. And they thought the, up, the roof was a better uh, location anyway, because it gets a lot of sunlight. Hopefully, it's a marriage made in heaven for the bees. In September, we take the honey, jar it all up. Yeah. I never realised what honey is supposed to taste like. You buy it in a supermarket, it's been ultra-filtered, pasteurised, it's a blend of who knows what honeys from what countries. So when I first tried this stuff from these bees, I thought, wow, this is, this is amazing. This is floral, it's complex. It's a taste of toffee, a taste of a bit of lime, a taste of this, a taste of that. So I wasn't really that bothered about honey until we, we started making our own. And now I realise how 
bloody good it tastes. Paul and I work completely differently. Which is good in a way, I suppose, because I'm a bit, everything's got to be done, planned and sorted and all meticulous. And Paul's a bit like, let's do it yesterday. So he's kind of really mellow and I'm really kind of stressy. So we sort of meet in the middle. Do you live together? No, we did, here. But then I ran away with a woman, left Paul. Hmm. Never forgive me. Yeah, that's a sensitive subject. And yeah, we don't talk about that. How's your girlfriend feel about uh, how busy you are with the business? I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm single. That's a joke. She's actually quite, um, what's the word, forgiving, which is a requirement. Which I'm very lucky, yeah. She's not like a normal girl. She's not mental. Paul's in the luxurious position that he doesn't have to answer to anyone. Free spirit. Free spirit. Lonely. <laughs> but yeah, she's pretty cool. And she's got muscles. He's got a bit of a thing about um, muscular women. What's your, your saying? Is it a good um, calf to ankle ratio? Oh, she's got a great yeah, calf to ankle ratio. I don't want some tubular limbs, do you? Like, <laughs> we'll get, get a phone call from one of our customers or some random going, oh, there's a swarm. And I'm like, sorry, love, I've got to go. It's like being a fireman, a really rubbish fireman. A swarm is, when, is, is how a hive naturally replicates. So the old queen will leave with half the bees leaving um, the younger bees in the hive with an emerging queen. Best part of the job, swarming, picking up swarms. Mm, it's exciting. Exciting, 20,000 bees clustered in a tree. Whoa! Shake them into the bucket, put the bucket into a hive, take them away. People are happy, we're happy, the bees are happy, everyone's happy. Oh, look, <laughs> honey! <laughs> It's heavy, there you are. Oh, that. Whoa, seriously? You've that got much? Two of them. You've got about 80 jars this year. Seriously? Check it out. Wow, 80 of these. Yes. We got a hive because um, there was an empty space on the roof. I've been interested in this bees thing. I've got, I've got allergies. I, um, I get headaches from, you know, sinuses and all that sort of stuff. And these guys came along and said, yeah, this, go for it, do it. It's, it's different. It's minty. You can feel the, the the different sort of flowers, and it's just nicer. We're kind of inspecting every hive pretty much at least once a week in the summer. Right now, we're just going through the whole brood box. That's this box to make sure there's a laying queen because soon we're going to be shutting them up for winter. So we can just take that box off, and then you've just got the brood and the roof, and that's it, really. Because that means that it's. You know, it's a lot more insulated over winter. Oops, sorry, bees. Is it hard work? Yeah. I'm exhausted, can you tell? <laughs> yeah, it is hard work. It's heavy lifting and it's in the midday sun and you're sweating and it's quite labour intensive. Oh, they're a bit heavier. Beekeeping hungover is not recommended. It's like a vicious cycle of, oh God, the bees are getting angry. Oh God, I'm getting more and more clumsy. Oh God, they're getting more angry. So yeah, be keeping the hangover is just not the done thing. But you're all right today. I'm all right today, yeah, for once. I'm beekeeping today, so I didn't get pissed last night. <laughs> uh. There's the queen. That's what we wanted to see. You might see her lay. I know she's laying. You fucking better be. Well, that's happiness. Sometimes I can freak out quite a bit, like, and just I'll, I'll just try and leg it. And Chris, <laughs> when the hives are, you know, open and there's thousands of bees flying around, and you've got to, you've got to finish the job, right? <laughs> Not run into the house, <laughs> flailing your arms. <laughs> but it's quite yeah. scary when you get stung a lot of times. You're not used to it. it, it freaks you out. My analogy is we're, we're going into someone's house, tearing it apart, stealing things, accidentally killing a few bees along the way. They're going to get pissed off, aren't they? No wonder they're going to get annoyed, this thing is. I got about 40 in one go last year, and I felt, I went to, the, I actually went to the doctors the following day, because I was like, this is, feels weird, and but apparently anyone would feel weird with that many. This is disgusting. Sweat. It's like a sauna. I'm sure that's how I'm not such a fat bastard anymore. Just dripping in sweat all the time. We'll probably check them once or twice over the winter, but it also starts ramping up again in end of March, April. So we can have a rest for a few months. A few. Thank God. 
Do we love bees? I do love bees, yeah. They're, yeah, they're amazing. We could bore you for days about bees. Probably. Um, oh. Yeah, queen bee lays up to 2,000 eggs in a day. The, the mating ritual is she'll leave the hive. She'll be like a couple of hundred meters up in the sky and then drones from local hives will all come up into like a, a bee orgy. And that's the only time she'll mate. And then from that point on, she'll be laying like 2,000 eggs a day. And she can change what kind of eggs she lays. So it can be an unfertilized one or a fertilized one, which dictates if it's going to be a male or a female. I told you yeah, this... you. <laughs> You're asleep. <laughs>